Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Nigel here with you, Nigel's Modeling Bench and here we are now with part 4 of this lovely Spitfire build and if you remember back in part 3 we got all the detail painting done and I gave it all a clear gloss coat and then we got on with starting to assemble the wing and that's sat over there still drying, this is the, the night, this is still the, like 3 hours after I filmed part 3 so all this is done now, I have had a little bit of detail painting to the instrument panels, a yellow uh, surround on that gauge there and a red one on the one above you can see there and um, I've just sort of a bit of artistic life just just highlighted a few little bits and pieces just to make it look a bit more interesting so as you can see the instrument panel looks more more interesting to look at because when it's in there underneath the cowl and everything just it's a bit dark and you know you you, you need to make it pop um, so what I'm going to do now is give everything a pin wash before I assemble it and then look at doing some weathering after that. So I may do a little bit of chipping as well. So um, basically I've got two washes here. They're both oil washes as you can see from the label. And this one is industrial dirt and this one is black. Now industrial dirt is like a, a, a very dark grey colour which tends to be a, a little light for, for this sort of thing. In fact I'm going to use my little thing. Um, and the black tends to be a bit too harsh so my plan is is to do a kind of mix of the both so we'll put a drop of that in there and then we'll put a drop uh, come on, a drop of that in there with it and then we can mix them both together and we end up with like a very very dark grey wash so all I'm going to do is with this, this I use this brush because it's, it takes quite a lot of washing, it takes quite a lot to load it. So all I'm going to do is come along and just literally touch, touch where I want it to run. Okay, so like around those cables, around that throttle quadrant. And basically I want it to go into everywhere. I want it to go into all these rivet holes down here. Okay, so I can literally brush it down there. And then be careful in the areas where you won't be able to get to afterwards because what we're going to do is remove remove the excess. I don't know if you heard that, it's just growed in, Bluey. What this will do, this will just highlight all the areas where there are little edges and stuff. And this is Basically, just like you've, you've seen lots of people I expect use Tamiya panel liner. And this is why I gave it a gloss coat, because if, if I hadn't given it a gloss coat, where I'm getting the, the wash where I don't want it, it would actually stain. So if I, if I use this like this, I can, I can get these, these bits down here. You can see that extra bit down there. That will easily, even after a few hours, that will come away with a cotton bud, because it's on a gloss surface, not on a on a matte surface whereas if it was a matte surface obviously the matte surface is slightly porous and it would stain it so all we're doing here is just highlighting anywhere where there's an edge a corner a recess whatever as I said I'm going to be a little bit careful with that it capillary in behind there because I won't be able to get in there with a cotton bud and remove it in behind that pipework so we've got to be a little bit more careful in those areas but you can see straight away that it actually it just highlights everything and makes it all pop. And I'll give you a close up right now when I finish this little bit here. Just put some down there, put some down there, down there. There we go. Not that it really matters because it won't be seen, but we'll get some underneath that top edge. And there you go. You can see there we have a wash which is now picked up on all the little nooks and crannies. And you can see that that, that area there just looks so much better. I'm just going to get some to capillary along. There you go. You can see 
it sort of makes all the detail pop. It all sort of stands out now, and it's uh, it's a lot more obvious. Okay, so I'm going to carry on and do that and get the fuselage sides done, and all the other little bits and pieces that I've got over here painted, ready to go, and I'll show you it when I've done. Here we are back, a couple of hours later, and I've done a lot of the work already, but I'm going to show you what I do. And what we end up with is this sort of look here, and you can see that all the wash is doing is just in the edges and in the corners and in the rivets and everything. But this is where you see that, that pre-shading I did, if you remember, it kind of takes the, that, that dark wash and turns it into a shadow, a shadow, <laughs> rather than just a black line. So that's why I did it. And it's the same on here. You can see you've got like a fading effect of the, of the dark going around. You see it here as well. So that's that's our pin wash. So what we'll do, we just all we do is go around with a cotton bun. And I've, I've left some parts to show you. So here I've got the tanks. Okay, so you can see I've I've put the wash on there, and it's it's sort of it's it's more than what we want. So um, all we do is come along with a cotton bud and just literally, you know, as I say, this is a good couple of hours after it's been put on, and we can just go round. like so and get the excess off and it leaves the oil in all the little corners. Now if you want to do this to add some sort of, I, I cover a lot of this in the um, KT build, but um, if you want to do this and sort of darken the area, make it look like it's oil stained or just grubby from being handled a lot then if you leave the paint matte paint and don't put a gloss on it you it will kind of stain so that's the way to go about that so as you can see I can't really get in there into that corner it's very very difficult so what I will do is get a brush and then lightly dampen it with some um, odorless thinners and just run the brush around there and remove the excess you can see you can rub it, if the more you rub it, the more you will take off. But you can see now around the top, around those brass fittings, we get a very, very sort of nice realistic look. And it just enhances the, the detail. Also the same around the bottom. I can just remove some excess from there quite easily like that. There we go. Just like that. So there we are. So that's how I'm doing this. Um, I'll just show you on the on the form that the uh, instrument panel sits on. So you can see we've got here. You can see where I brushed it around that knob and everything. So I can just literally and remember, guys. This has been sealed. It's been overcoated with the um, aqua gloss, the Alclad aqua gloss. If you try and do this directly on the painted surface, especially with this brass colour, you'll just rub all the brass off. Around the compass. And you can see how it just kind of, if you look around that brass knob there and around the that switch, it just kind of accentuates it all. It makes it all look a bit more realistic. And you can see here if we stick the we put the instrument panel on there. The whole, the whole thing sort of comes to life. Like so. You can see the whole thing. It's, it's sort of come to life just with a few colours and a bit of a wash. And it kind of really does bring it out. You can see on here the effect you can get where we've removed it all and just left it in all the corners. It just makes all the detail pop so you'll see things that you wouldn't ordinarily see. So, um... A little bit more rubbing on there. And there we go. So happy with that. So I'll put that back on the rack ready to be assembled. Now in the seat, um, I've gone around the outside of the seat with the black and I've gone around the inside of the seat with the brown. But I've only done the brown about five minutes ago so that the brown's not ready to come off yet but you can see that the the black or the dark grey, should I say, is uh, 
is ready to be wiped off. We can just wipe it off and leave it in all the corners. Just like so. And as you can see, you know, that area there was just green. You know, just when you look inside the copy, you wouldn't see anything. But now, because we've got this wash in there, it sort of picks up all the detail. And you will see everything. And there we go. And that's how we get that effect to make it all look a bit used and a bit weathered and a bit old. So I'll carry on and get the rest of this done. And then we're going to have to start looking at assembling it all, I guess. And then we'll start looking at doing some chipping, perhaps. And see how we can make it all look. So moving forward. Um, I'm sorry this is a bit bitty, but this is the way it is with painting and detailing and washing and this and the other. It's all sort of, rather than just leave the camera on and make an hour long video of nothing. So with the instrument panel, <clears throat> you will see there, I've actually gone over it with a semi-gloss. And then the actual flight pan in the middle, I've masked off that and gone over the mat. So that's what they're asking for in the instructions. And I thought it would look good to get, because it just gives it a bit of texture. And also because it's matte, it hides that massive sink mark in the middle. So um, there we go. The instrument panel out of the box using all the company, the, the company, the kit decals uh, is uh, is lovely. So what I'm going to do now is I need the, the, the thing that's lacking now is the faces need to be shiny because they were glazed. So I've got some Tamiya X22. I'm not going to use anything any hotter than that for fear that it will soak through because we're going to put it on quite thick. I don't want it to soak through and destroy the decals. So Tamiya X22, take the plastic sleeve off the brush sludge. So Tamiya X22, straight from the jar. Okay, and I'm gonna, I think I've got a bit of dust on there, a bit of fluff or something. Get rid of that, there we go. And then, well, I'll do a couple on screen and then I'll go under the magnifier to do the rest. So I'll do a couple of big ones. Basically just paint in a nice big puddle of clear over the gauge. You can use a cocktail stick for this, but I prefer to use a brush on these larger areas because the the brush will obviously hold more paint. And you you really want to make sure you get into all the edges like so. And you really want to put plenty in there because you want it to self-level, to level out. So there you go, you can see on there, we now have a glazed gauge. And it looks a little uneven to start with, but it will settle itself out. Let's just do another one there. I'm not so sure if that one's got a rim around it. I think it's raised that one. So I'm not going to play with that one much more. There we go. Just paint it in there. Run it around. Make sure it goes up to the edge. You can see now the, the contrast between the matte and the gloss and everything. So I'm going to get this done off camera. And then I'll come back and show you what it looks like when it's done. Here we are. 12 hours later. We can see the instrument panel is all dried up. Uh, we can see that we've got, let's get some better light on for you. We can see that we've got the, the matte panel there in the middle, the semi-gloss around the outside and the glazing on the gauges. And when you look at it without the reflections, you can see that the dashboard, the instrument panel looks quite nice. It's not going to be a patch on like with the air scale one. When that comes out, that'll be a million percent better than this. And I'm sure the Red Fox one will be as well. But um. You know, this, this kit is being built out of the box. I'm not adding anything to it, so I'm going with that. And I think Airfix have done a great job in giving us those decals. And a um, bit of care, a bit of attention, you can get that sort of result. So I'm happy with that. 
So that's going to be going in as it is. Right, if you remember, I've also done around here, I've painted these clamps in the interior colour because when this goes in, as you can see, this is the oxygen pipe with the economizer on it. And that's going to go in like that. And you can see you've got clamps there. And then there's clamps up on the side of the fuselage there. So when that goes in, it's kind of, there we go. It's kind of like that in there. You can see we've got clamps holding that in. So that all looks good. Um, so yeah, I'm happy with how this is coming out. So if you remember, I said about the seat. Now I have actually put a wash on the seat and I've removed most of it with a cotton bud. I just want to get like an uneven look to it. And if you remember, I need to get some sort of chipping going on around the edge where it's like painted green, but the edge is chipped. Let's some better lighting. Um, so I've got some of the LP16, is it? LP18 um, and a bit of sponge. And I'm just going to dip my sponge in the paint, get it nice and wet, and then remove most of the paint and then we should be able to just come along here I've got the um the lever there masked off so we should be able to come along here and just add some of this paint to give that edge a sort of chipped and rough look take away that hard edge there we go As you can see there, that's given us that nicely sort of chipped up edge to the seat. So there we are. And then what I'm going to do is take a drop of black. Right, so I've added a drop of black to the paint, literally just a drop, just to darken it up a touch. So we're going to put the sponge in there and then remove most of the paint. Just like so, and then I'm just going to dab this in here. And all I'm trying to achieve is a bit of a broken up finish. So if you look at these seats, it's not just a plain sort of red colour. It's I'm guessing it's like the difference in the bits of whatever it is in the plastic material. So it's just a very very subtle effect. A lot of the times with modelling, guys, if you're new to the hobby, it's sort of being subtle is so that the eye is taken to it and you're like, that's interesting. And you can't really see what it is. You know, if I did this with green, it would be obvious that there's green chipping on there sort of thing. But this is this is very, very subtle. I'm not even sure if you're going to see that on camera, but it gives you a kind of, sort of see that way. It gives it a kind of, you can see it's got a look to it that's not uniform. That's what you're after. That's better. Okay, so happy with that. So we can work on the leather bit now. We'll probably give the seat a flat coat actually, or, or a semi-gloss coat, and then work on the leather bit. But uh, happy there. That's come out. All the edges looking good, and we've got that blotchy look on the bottom, which is just what I was after. Right. And so on to the <clears throat> chipping. Now I've got some silver paint on the sponge and basically it's just a case of going around and just thinking about areas that you want to look chipped, uh, like on here on the sides. Um, you, know, you have to think about where the pilot's feet would have gone. He wouldn't have been able to get down the sides there. So, you know, um, <clears throat> on this bulkhead around here where his feet would have knocked into and that, just give it a bit of a chip. Be very, very careful though with silver paint because with silver paint it sticks out like a sore thumb. So you need to be very, very subtle with it. Less is more. Uh, you can see on here I've chipped that edge there where the belts and that would knock into it when they take the belts off. So what we need to do is make sure that we get this in here and make sure that the adjacent area on the fuselage is chipped as well. You've got to be quick because the paint starts to dry out. And you can see on there now, I can catch it in the light. It's, it's very subtle, but because it's silver, it's, it sticks like a sore thumb. So be a little bit careful. Don't go over the top. Um, we can just do some there as well. The paint is actually drying out, so I'll get some more on here. 
and I'm using the Viejo paint from the wet palette purely because if it goes on too much I can take it off with a, with a wet sponge with a wet uh, cotton bud <clears throat> so I'm just going to test the back of here just to make sure it's not going to make a big splodgy mess and just dab it on here and get something going on we're not trying to paint it silver we're not trying to dry brush it we're just trying to add some uneven silver color to it i doubt you can even see that but it's there so that's basically what we are trying to achieve doing this so that's that then you can also see here i've masked off those black panels underneath because obviously you don't want to go chipping them um so that's that done now the other thing we could do is a bit of dry brushing now i have here this is a brush which has this paint here on it. Oh dear, I should have been prepared and got this paint out for you, sorry. This paint here, this is Metal, Mr. Metal Colour 218 Alumine. <laughs> okay, Aluminum. Al Alminum, that's what they called it, Alminum. Um, and literally dip the paint in there and brush the brush off to within, <clears throat> within an inch of its life. This has been, I can't even talk this morning, believe it or not, that has been on there for about six weeks. And it will give us a very, very subtle dry brush effect. I'm just going to show you on this instrument panel. Okay, watch this. And you'll see it's so subtle, you can hardly see it, but it makes quite the difference. And we can do that all over the cockpit. And it will just kind of take away that green <clears throat> monotone look over everything, over all the black parts and everything. And it will just, you can see, it just kind of picks up. I doubt you can even see it on the camera, but it just picks up literally just picks up corners and edges and stuff and it just i don't know if you could just you can just suddenly see a silver line down the edge of there <clears throat> and it's just literally very very subtle make sure you don't do the seat because the seat was made of plastic <clears throat> God, i've got a frog in my throat right and then we can do the same on here And we're not really trying to add any chipping or weathering or scraping. All we're trying to do is just sort of take away that monotone look. And the beauty of this is that this brush, as you can see, has been sat here. And I need to get some more of that stain off of there. And you can see this is like 18 hours since I put this on there. And you can, I can still just rub it off. It just, just kind of takes away that monotone green look and it will make all the details pop. We can do it on these bottles. I don't know if you can see it, but on the, on the brass there you can see there's a subtle difference in the in the colour. Make sure you don't do it on rubber and plastic items and stuff. You can do it on here on the control column. There we go. And on here, on that panel there. There we go. So I've also chipped up the rudder pedals as you can see. Now we can go over with this and just... So now guys we are ready. Oh, well, let's do this unit here. This is like this coil pack. Oops. 
Luckily that stayed on the bench. This is that coil pack that goes on the back of that bulkhead. And as you can see, we have the just very, very slightly lifted detail on there. And we can do this day in, day out. Keep, keep doing it. Just, just put the brush away. Don't put any more paint on it. And it'll just keep going. Just keeps giving. And now that seat is dry, hopefully you can see that sort of chipped up effect on the edge and the blotchy effect in the base. Right. So I think we need to start looking at assembly, don't we? One little thing now, we've added some brown, I've taken, you can see in the wet palette here, some sort of leather brown paint and made a really wet wash with it and just brushed it onto the back of the seat there just to give that, that red hue a bit of a brown tinge and we'll let that dry, you can see it's drying matte, see it's wet in the middle still and we'll let that dry and then we'll go over it with some dark oil. Um, I've also done the seat belts with some dark oil. So you can see what's happened there, it's kind of stained the paint and gone into all the nooks and crannies and stuff and made them look pretty realistic. So when we put the seat belt on the seat, you can see it all looks pretty realistic. Um, so that's that done. And that's a bit busy, I haven't really done much else. So uh, wait for this to dry, and then we'll put some oil on it. And then uh, I'll show you how that looks, and then we'll do the treatment with the, the nose oil just to give it a bit of a sheen. So, um, onwards and upwards, as they say. And there we go, the seats had a had a bashing with some oil, so we can see there we've got like the, the red blotchy effect in the bottom, and we've got the sort of red leather on the back. Now, obviously, leather has a bit of a sheen, and the best way to add that sheen, I found, I learned this from a, uh, from a guy at Telford, and basically you rub your finger down the side of your nose where you have some skin oil and just gently rub that over there just like so and you can put as you can see there you can put a slight sheen and that gives you that sort of leather look if you want to go some more you just rub it some more and you can add to it and get more sheen on there okay so quite disgusting but works very very well and I learned that I think it must have been like 2013 or something up at Telford I was on the Tamiya stand and I was chatting to the guy that built the FAMO that had just been released and I asked him how he got the wonderful leather look on the seat and he told me and I've done it ever since and it's a bloody brilliant tool um, so there we go right so what I want to do now I want to give all this uh, a satin varnish because as you can see it's still quite glossy I don't mind the aluminium being glossy, but I don't want all this being glossy. So I'm going to give all this green a coat of satin varnish just to take it back a bit. And, um, and I think then we can put it all together. So I'll go around and get all these parts painted. And um, I'm not going to worry about masking stuff. I'll just put my finger over like that and spray it. Just It's just to, to tone it down a bit. So I will use Tamiya XF... X35, sorry, which is a Tamiya uh, semi-gloss varnish. And that'll just knock it all back a touch. So, panels all painted. I decided it had a, too much of a sheen, so I decided to go over with some LP23 flat clear. And Tamiya's flats are never actually dead flat, so you can see there it does have a slight sheen to it, which is accurate. Um, cockpits are never just dead flat, there's always a sort, some sort of sheen in there, so I've decided to give it that sort of sheen. And I've also given another bit of a dry brush with some of that silver just to sort of highlight some of those details so when we when we actually look at it when it's actually in the fuselage halves we can see that it all looks all hunky dory and lovely just like that so there we go we've got our cockpit interior sidewalls all done uh, so we're ready to start some assembly you can see that side there all looking good right and I think you'll agree now that light green that I had, you probably thought at the beginning, oh no, it's too light. I think you'll agree now, it looks correct. So, thank you to Edward. Edward's put a message on my part two video and told me, warn me of this tailwheel. It was really funny. Yesterday when I was sat here, I was looking at this thinking, 
I wonder if that tail wheel fits in there right, because that's going to be a nightmare if we'll go through the hole. So apparently what, what Deborah has told me is that I need to be careful because apparently the tail wheel splits the rear fuselage open. So I was thinking that maybe this aperture here wasn't wide enough, but it goes in there absolutely fine. But when you try and fit it into the actual part that it's supposed to go into, it's a very, very tight fit. So it's not actually going through the fuselage is the problem, it's there. It's a very tight fit. So what I'm going to do is just get a coarse skinny stick. Just remove some material from either side of this square lump. So yeah, thank you for uh, thank you for that, Edward. Um, good bit of advice. We can see there. I can get a nice snug fit. In fact, what I'm going to do now is use a knife. Use the round knife. I'm just going to scrape at the back because it feels like it's kind of tapered. Just scrape away some plastic from the back. We still want a nice snug fit because if we get a snug fit we can just put some glue in there and then that'll be that. There we go. So it's obviously not very much, it's only a couple of thou, but better to find it now than to find it later on. As I say, I was thinking that maybe the I was thinking I'll just check the tail will actually goes through that hole. It does, it goes through there absolutely fine and then it slots into that just like that. So we're all good there now. Right. So now we need to start putting our fuselage together. So the first thing I'm going to do is glue the instrument panel to here. Oh, off camera, I fitted the the glazing to the um, to the compass. Uh, it's like it's too big. It sort of sits up a bit on the surface. Uh, it's got. I've, I've glued it in with white glue, so we should be good. So the instrument panel is going to go on to here, like so. And there's no real location for it. It just sort of goes on. So what I'm going to do is because we've got clear plastic it's made of, so we've got bare plastic on the back, we've got bare plastic there. So I'm just going to use some of my Tamiya white glue. And then just drop that on. Just like so. And then just, may as well take it off of this peg, haven't I? And then I just want to make sure it's all correctly aligned so we can line up the, the slots in the top. So I should be able to get in there with a pair of tweezers, white glue on the tweezers. Yeah, so it's... I think that should do it. And obviously we've got the gun sight going to go in there. So I think what I'm going to do is put some extra thin in there. Let it capillary down into that gap. Because it doesn't feel like it's glued very positively. And we don't want it falling off now, do we? There we go. You can see now this is all starting to come to life with our glazed gauges and everything. So I'm really happy how that's come out. There we go. Right. Let's put that there for it to dry for a minute. So we can get our instructions out because remember we need we have a strict build sequence here to follow. And we don't want to mess it up because there's bits going in between other bits and stuff. So we've got the seat all going together. Da, 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 da. We're not going to put the seat belt. Oh, we need to put the seat belts in now because actually, if you don't, you won't get that seat belt in the left hand side. So in fact, what we'll do is we'll build up the cockpit onto the floor and then we'll fit it after. Uh, so what they're asking us to do now is take this bulkhead here, or this former. It's hardly a bulkhead, is it? And then this unit is going to go on the back. So that's going to glue the 
quail at the top that's going to glue in there like so and a lot of this is going to probably need some clean up so I'm going to scrape some I cleaned out the lid of my white glue with my tweezers and I've got white glue all over the tweezers. So I'm just going to remove some paint from there, some paint from here. And then I can plonk that in there. And then I should be able to come in with a drop of extra thin. Just tap it. That'll be that glued in. Right. I can actually tap it on the top because it's going to be hidden by that horizontal member. So that's that done. And we've got the armour plate going on, which we've already done, and then they're telling us to put the seat onto here. So we grab the seat. We get the armour plate. It's going to fit onto there so again we're going to clean the paint off of here and clean the paint out of here and remove the paint because it gives us a, a better joint And then just check the fit of that. That's going to drop in there lovely. So what I'm going to do is get some extra thin into there. A nice big drop in there. Drop the seat, drop the armour back down on. And then just plonk it onto the seat. And that should be enough to hold that in place. I think we'll leave that for a minute and let that dry. I also need to do some chipping on that, but that can be done after. Right. Right, so <clears throat> the, that armour plate is not very stable just glued in the centre. So I've come in underneath it, we're never going to see. And I've put some super glue down in there and let it capillary up. And now it's, it's quite solid, so that's good. Um, so I'm going to fit this seat to this bulkhead. I've scraped up, scraped off the paint from the location points. So the top two lugs are just going to slip in to that frame there and then we've got two little cutouts in the bottom if you've built the Revell kit you will know that this is much much better than that the Revell kit in this area is a nightmare I'm on about the Mark 2 is it I don't know about the Revell Mark 9 I don't know what that one's like but the Mark 2 is an absolute nightmare Right, so with that glued in, we put in there, we can come along with some glue in there. Put some glue in there. I'm putting plenty in there because I want a nice welded joint. Not the seat falling out, do we? Okay, so that's gone in there, and then that can all be pushed in place nice and solid. I'm just using tweezers to squeeze everything down because it's all a very tight fit even without the paint so you know the paint is not helping so that's gone in there we end up with a little recess in the back there there's two little recesses that you might want to fill but um probably just leave them to be honest because where they are they're not really going to be seen So there's our seat fitted into the bulkhead, looking all lovely. And now I'm going to look at these seat belts because we do need to put them in now. Because this, particularly this one here, once we get the the side on, the fuselage side on, we won't be able to glue this in. So I'm going to put this in here. Okay, sit that in position like that. We can see it goes, there's a hole down there that's going to go over. There's a hole in the side. I flip the seat belt up out of the way. There's a hole in the side, almost like there was supposed to be a pin on the seat belt, but there isn't. So I'm going to grab a drop of super glue. This is the black VMS. Put it over that hole. 
and then bring the seat belt around just push it down onto that super glue. I'm really annoyed that I've got glue on into those tweezers. Okay, so that's going to sit in there. Remember, if you haven't seen part one, go back and have a look. These seat belts are seriously thinned out. So they're the kit parts, but they're seriously thinned out. So as I say, I'm building this out of the box, but I've modified the seat belts somewhat. So get rid of these hooks. I'm just going to drop that one on there and I want to fit them both at the same time because they kind of will interfere with each other if you're not careful. Okay so that's gone like that so again I'm going to put a drop of super glue on here. And then bring this seat belt over into that super glue and then we can grab a cotton bud just wick off the excess just like so and as you can see there we go that's those sat in there and I'm liking that a lot I think they look great I mean HGW seat belts would be a hell of a lot better because HGW seat belts are simply the best as far as I'm concerned. But, um, it's slightly off there, you can see the hole just protruding behind the seat belt. But we're not going to worry about that. It's a bit more of a mess to move it than it will to uh, just leave it as it is. There we go, so that's our seat with our lower seat belts in place. Okay, so we've done up to step nine. See in there, they're showing those lugs going back a lot further than they actually do. So, uh, that's fine. So we'll go over the page. So step 10, we've done all this, that's already done. We've done step 11, remember I didn't glue those in. We've done step 12. We've done step 13, we've done step 14, 15. So now it's telling us to glue that bulkhead into the floor. And that's going to go into this groove down in here. So I'm going to grab a pointed tool and just scrape away the paint. Now the reason I'm scraping away the paint obviously is for a good joint. But we remember that has got primer green paint, well it's got pre primer, pre-shading, green paint, clear, then more clear, and then flat. So it's, there's quite a lot in there, so we're scraping it away so that I can make sure we get a good joint. And I'll do the same on the bottom of here, just sand away. Anything that's on there. And then this is going to pop into there. Like so. We'll squeeze it from the bottom. It does kind of go in. I'm conscious of the fact that it's it's kind of clicking into place, so therefore it's tight on something. It's not tight on the front and back. It's tight on the sides by the look of it. So I'm going to grab my 400 grit stick. Just remove any paint from the sides there and then with my curved blade wherever that may be here I'll scrape away any paint from the sides there and then see how it fits now Yeah, it's still not going fully down to the bottom, so I want to see what's going on here. So I'm going to come off camera and then I'll tell you what I found. Alright, so I've had some fun with fitting this, and basically I think what it is, 
the radius of the bottom here is too sharp so it sort of comes out in more of a corner so what I've done is just sanded away some of the radius of that from, from the bottom and just loosened it up so it seems to fit a lot better. I've scraped all the paint off um, I also thought there was some there's two sort of steps in the middle I thought there was an issue with them but there doesn't seem to be an issue with those at all so that actually drops down in there now quite nicely so um, <clears throat> we could get some extra thin into there and have that glued down in just like so I'm tempted to see if I can get a peg in there if I get a peg in there without breaking anything it's going to be extremely difficult I wonder if my clamping tweezers will get in there and hold it let's see there we go So that's that bulkhead held in place, like that. Uh, so the next step now is to add the side wall, which is good because that's going to make sure. Now these don't need to be glued. You can clip these in, just like so. That just stays in place. And now we can see that the that bulkhead there is going to go into that groove on the side, so that's cool. So that's good. Can I get a peg in there? Yes, I can. Can we get in from this side? Yes, I can. So I can come in from this side where it won't be seen and just put a drop of glue in there and let that capillary up. And that can do its thing so that's that done so we've now done up to step 17 it's going quick this isn't it <clears throat> now it's telling us to add that part in the side but I'm going to leave that for now until that peg dries so I'm going to leave this to dry and then I'll be back with you in a minute right so here we go that's been drying for half an hour now so glue's all holding that together well so we can see that's looking all lovely in there here we go so the instructions the next thing is this unit on the side going in so that's this one here now I'm probably gonna have to do some paint removal on here we've got this key type there's a, like a keyhole fitting in there where it goes in and we've got a great big peg on the back so I'm gonna remove the paint from here just to make life a bit easier because I'm hoping I can fit it and then glue it afterwards from behind for a nice neat joint Remove some paint from there and then a little bit from the bottom. There we go. Put our fingers off, blow that off, and see how it goes in. There we go, so that's gone in lovely, and then we've got that leg at the bottom. I'm just gonna push in there. Right, so we can squeeze that into there. And then push, push that down in there, that's it. Right, so drop of extra thin on there. Let's hold that one in place, drop of extra thin in there. And now that we've done that, that will probably push in a little bit more. So there we go, I just had a bit of lunch and I feel a bit burpy, so <laughs> excuse me if I burp. Right, um, that's that in there, so that's all good. Right, what's next? Um, you can see we've got some different sheens going on as well, where I haven't matte coated that. So you can see we get some different sheens going on, which adds a bit of interest rather than just having everything matte. Uh, my Tamiya one, I'd, I'd matte coated everything and it just looks bleh, it looks quite boring, it's, it needs something to it. Uh, so next thing now is getting these rudder pedals in which are already assembled So these are going to go in here and if you remember I drilled those holes out to make these shafts easier to go through because they were a, 
a nice snug fit when they were plastic but with the paint on they would have been a lot tighter and as you can see they are a nice sliding fit now and if you remember I've drawn open that hole there make sure you draw that one out because that's a very tight fit on there so we can just put a drop of extra thin in there let that glue itself down and then we've got this piece here going on the top this is um part d26 that piece is going on the top and what we're going to do here is fit this in but I'm not going to glue it on this end because I've discovered that the control column goes through and in fact what we may as well do is fit the control column first haven't we there's no reason why we can't do that so we'll fit the control column in here so that's going to go in sit in there like so I'm just going to check I've got it the right way around Dum -de dum -de dum yes I have. So the control column is going to sit in there and we'll just put a drop of extra thin in the bottom on both sides. Drop in there as well. And that should stay in position right now we've got that in place now we can fit this afterwards because what I discovered was the control column is very difficult to put through here afterwards so we're going to slide this here over the control column and then put the top down over that pin that's it that's all fitted nicely now and there we go, so a drop of extra thin under there to lock that in place and then a quick tap on here tap, tap we'll get that glued in place just like so so you can see now that's, that's how that fits in there all looking lovely so that's that done Right, it looks like I've touched this, the back of this with the glue when I've glued the control column in. I may need to come in there with some green paint and just touch that in. We shall see. That's all held in place now. In fact, I think I'm going to put this to one side and let it dry because <clears throat> I don't want to have to come back later and mess with it. I've got glue oozing out there, which I'm just going to see if I can pick up on a cotton bud. Yeah, it's making more mess than it's worth. Yeah, I'm going to have to let this dry and then just touch it in with a brush because uh, I don't want to leave that like that because I think it's going to be quite visible even though this is going to go in here like so that area down in there oh, I don't know I, I think I will just because because it's got this rough finish on the top so I'll give it a quick going over with, with the sanding stick once it's dry and then just sort of dab some green paint on there just to give it a a green look I mean perhaps a bit of oil or whatever so I'll see you in a minute right so pushing forward I've actually glued this in while I was off camera because I didn't I wasn't sure I might need clamping in place make sure it goes down and I've, had, I've sanded some material and scraped some material away from the air to make sure it sits in these grooves there's a there's a groove there that it sits in there's a groove there for the bulkhead there you need to make sure it goes in otherwise we're going to get problems with the fuselage going together um, so yeah I've scraped some material off of here to thin the to thin it down a touch um, I'm just going to zoom you in a bit actually because it looks a little bit there we go, that's a bit better um, it looks so it basically goes in and I sanded some material off the bottom to make it go down in so I've made sure it's gone down in nice and solid now I've had a quick look at fitting this in the fuselage and when we look at this side it all appears to go in absolutely fine okay so it goes in like that and you've got this little lug at the front that goes into that cutout and it all sits in there absolutely lovely and then I tried looking at the other side of the fuselage and when you look at this side you have this sort of semi-circular cutout for something or other I don't know what it's for and then on this side you have a lug 
yet where possibly a pin was or something but I think that lug's going to get in the way because when you actually offer this up to here and I haven't got the side wall on yet but when you offer this up to here you can see the instrument panel goes into its groove and that little lug is pushing these parts apart okay it's, it's getting in between there so I'm going to remove that lug because I don't think it's serving any purpose whatsoever so I'm just going to cut that away and then we'll see if it improves my fit and if it doesn't do anything then you know not to worry about it but if it does do something then you know to get rid of it um, I'm, I'm thinking there may have been a pin there that's got snapped off in the mould or something but um, whatever I, I don't want anything causing any issues with the fit of the fuselage going together just remove the paint from there so um it is a very tight fit and it's going to be very snug but the top of it if you look at it the top of it is flattened off to fit underneath that little flat area in there okay and then you've got this this sort of slot in the top it's be contortionist to get my hands you've got the slot at the top and that's going to form a rectangular hole where you're going to slot the um the gun sight into so there we go right so moving forward looking at the instructions we've done the rudder pedal da, 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 time to put that bulkhead in now it's telling us to fit the seat so we've got our seat over here i've gone over and put some oil over this as well and um and then done the normal thing you know with a cotton bud and just remove the oil we can always doctor that up afterwards the other thing i can do is come along now with my brush with my dry brushing brush and just give it some metallic sheen and if we want to we can add some chips to the top and everything when it's in but, um we're probably gonna have to do a little bit of work on this cockpit after it's all built anyway right oh the other thing is i, I did um i put some green paint on the top of that and in there and then a, a drop of oil on top of it as well so so that fits in there and that doesn't even need to be glued i don't think so that's gone in there beautifully and just going to give it a quick squeeze here yeah it's gone together beautifully um i'm not going to glue it right so that's gone in there and then it's telling us to add these two bulkheads here behind so we've got this one here going in and we need to make sure that we get those two lugs these two lugs here pointing backwards because there's a frame that goes in between so that's going to sit in there like so okay now I'm tempted to peg this in place but I want to put this bulkhead in first let's just get that in there like that get a peg in there what I want to do is clamp this bulkhead in place and then somehow fit this one here which is going to be awkward um, See what we'll do. We'll fit that back one first. So we'll get some extra thin in here. As we move further back, we don't need to worry too much about glue oozing out and stuff. Now you can see the problem we have. We have no indication of where we are. Sort of, it can be. You can see I can put it like. There's no location there's no tab or anything that tells me I'm I'm correct so that is a bit of a worry so I think the best thing to do is drop this into this fuselage have I'm doing all this now this is the first time I haven't done any dry runs off camera or anything so let's hold that in the fuselage and as you can see it's being held away oh okay so it does seem to, I was lucky the first time I got it, I got it right the first time. I'm just looking at, you've got some holes, oops, oh no. You've got some holes down here that I've drilled out um, and they should help us see if we're correctly aligned or not. The problem is, I, I wish they'd put like a tab on here or something, that's bad engineering because there is nothing to stop you putting that in all on the angle, on the on the. I always said the rude word. So 
we need to be very careful here to make sure we've got that level. Um, it's very lightly glued, so I'm going to leave it like that, I think. But, uh, yeah, that's, um, that's very bad engineering. They should have put something, a location or something in there. Because on these, we've got these, we've got these steps on the side, so we know we're in the correct position. But with these others, we have nothing. With that back one, we have nothing. So basically, that's going to go in like that. Right, so what I've done here, you can see I've got this, this former here, it's pegged in place. And then what I've done is looking directly down on the end, we can actually line that up. When we'll look at that profile there, and we can line it up. Look through the centre, you can see the... When I look down, when I look down through here, okay, I can see that cut out in the top of the instrument panel for the gun sight. And I can line that up over the top. And I can see that I'm central and then just twist this bulkhead until it's in the right place or twist that former, should I say. But um, yeah, I wish they, they should have put a lug or something down in there. And that would make life a lot easier for everyone. So be careful that when you build yours, perhaps even leave that out until you glue it into the fuselage. But then you've got this frame to go in, which I think is the next thing we're going to do, isn't it? Excuse me, sorry about that, phone went. So, next bit, the thing to do is fit this piece in here. So that's going to go in those little shelves in there. And it fits beautifully in there. Really, really nice. So, <clears throat> we'll get some extra thin into there, like so. Drop into there, like so. And then we'll turn it around and get a drop in there. And a drop in there. Right. So, that should... Just rest in place on top of those little feet. It's all getting a bit flimsy now. There we are. <clears throat> and then there's another straight one here which goes across the top, which I'm not going to put in a moment because I've got those pegs in the way and that's glowing. So we're going to let that dry. And then when that's dry, we'll put the seat bulkhead back in and then we can put that top member in as shown here and then we're going to fit the seat belt and then it goes on about the control column which is already done then it's telling us to put these uh, tanks into the side panel there so I know we've got a bit of paint work to do here so I'm going to scrape let's get that out of the way so we don't get our scrapings all over it going to scrape some of that paint off of there and then scrape some paint off of there I mean, that's thick. <laughs> um, of course, this was painted about four times, wouldn't it? Because I had those dastardly seal seams to deal with. When's the last time you heard that word said dastardly? And then these are just going to sit on those little semicircular cutouts and sit in there like that. Drop a cement in there to hold that in. And that's them fitted. Don't they look lovely? Those decals are not on there, they're lovely, aren't they? Really, really nice. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do now is just let that glue gel off for a few seconds and then I'm going to get in there with some silver paint so that we uh, don't see that because <clears throat> I do believe that's going to be quite visible. Mm, yes and no. So I'm just going to touch up with a bit of silver paint anyway, and then uh, that'll be looking good. So let's get these pegs off. I have actually glued this bulkhead. I just put a drop of glue down in there and a drop of glue down in there so that we didn't upset the silver paint. Just checking everything's all lined up and all looking good. So that's great. So we can slot our seat bulkhead in. And I think what I'll do with this one is glue it the same as I did with that one there. Just so it doesn't fall out again because that could have been nasty. I'm going to give this a squeeze with the tweezers. Also give it a squeeze down, make sure it's all gone in. It feels like it's all gone in nicely. So we'll put a drop of cement down in there, let that work its way round, and a drop of cement down in there, let that work its way round. And often when you've got painted joints like this, the cement will act as a kind of lubricant. 
and just allow you to just get it all together right so that's all good now we've got this member on the top here doesn't seem to have any particular way it goes vertically so we'll just put it in and I think what I'll do is put it the one end I had to grab to paint it so it's got one end is not, is unpainted so that's just going to fit into that slot there it's a tight fit so <clears throat> we are going to remove some plastic from either side and some paint as well do the same there Let's see if it'll go in that's better okay it's still quite tight on that end so what we will do with this one is we've got a little bit of a mold seam in there and we've also got some paint in there so we'll get both out there we are just shows you see a little bit of care a little bit of time a little bit of patience don't force anything and it should all go together now before we glue it I'm going to try it in the fuselage because we have grooves that it's all sitting in and we want to make sure that it's all going to sit correctly. So that's going to go in there like that. That's going to sit in there like that. So we've got that one in its groove, that one's in its groove, that one's in its groove, so we're all good. And interestingly as well, if you look on here, this one comes up and it it is straight right up to the edge so you want to make sure that 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 horizontal that longitudinal member you've put in there isn't sticking out at the back so we just put a drop of cement on there drop of cement on there and then just give it a little prod down make sure it's good that's all good to go so that's we're really starting to get something with this now so i'm going to let that dry rather than tempt fate and having it all moving around i'll see you back in a second that's had a chance to um to dry off now so what we're going to do now is look at putting the as it tells us in the instructions we've done this bit here so now we're going to fit the belts here's our belts here we're all painted up all done oops matte varnished we've got the brass eyelets done and everything as well um so all looking good so that is going to go in here going to go through this hole now bear in mind these are very very thin I've thinned these out a lot if you, if you haven't seen that go back to part one and have a look but basically what I found was with this lump on the end here it wouldn't go through that slot so you're going to have to thin that lump out on the end whatever you do if you're using the plastic belts if you don't want to thin them out I wouldn't recommend using them um, so that's going to go back there now this little it's very difficult to show you on here there's a little sort of hook bit in the middle that goes into that hole in the base of the in the back of the seat so that's just going to fit in there and then that is going to glue down so what I'm going to do is take that out of there and then glue this in place because obviously that is making it all spring out so I'm going to grab a drop of quick setting put it in there and then put the seat bolts onto that Drop of quick setting, which is probably dried already, hence the name quick setting. So that can just sit there, and then once that's gone off, we can put that piece down inside the seat, and that will hold it in and it will hold the, the belts down to the seat. We don't need to glue it or anything. There we go. We'll let that go off and then we'll put the seat part back in afterwards. We've done all this. We've done all this. We just glued those tanks in. So now it's time to fit 
this other side of the fuselage into there. So let's see how this goes. I've got a feeling this is going to go in with a click and then we're not going to be able to get it out again. Okay, make sure those legs are all sort of intertwined. There we are. That's gone down in. As you can see, now that forms a lovely little pod. And we have our battery went. As I pick this up to show you the battery went. So there we go. So there's our little cockpit pod. All sorted and all looking lovely. So what we can do now is clamp this together and get it all glued. Um, just thinking now because of that interruption, that back of that belt should be dry. So we should be able to flick. I don't think I'll tempt fate. I'll leave that and let that go hard. So we can come along now with our extra thin and drop some down in there. Drop some down in there. Drop some down in there. And drop some down in there. Okay, I'm going to peg that because that wants to come backwards instead of sitting nice and flush. Right, that bulkhead there has gone into its groove beautifully because I thinned it out, so bear that in mind. <clears throat> I remember somebody did message me and say that their friend was building one of these and they had to rip a chunk out of the forward bulkhead to make it fit. I don't know if you remember me mentioning that. And I was thinking the forward bulkhead, I was thinking the actual firewall. He said the firewall. I reckon he meant this one because... You know, th this is where it's not skill, it's experience. It's just knowing where problem areas are likely to crop up. And that is a problem area in every model aircraft you'll ever build. That is a potential problem area. So just bear that in mind. Make sure you dry fit it. Make sure all the parts are going fully into their grooves and sitting down in the floor. Not sitting up too high and then you shouldn't have an issue. So we can try this in here now and we can see if that me removing that lump in the other fuselage half has made any difference. So, God, that looks nice in there. Right, let's uh, just offer these two halves up together. Look at that. Well done, Airfix. Look at that. See, no problem whatsoever. So, dry fit, dry fit, dry fit, care and attention, care and attention, and you should be good to go. That's going to need a clamp together there, and we're going to have to do some filler work, because unfortunately the edges of the plastic are quite soft, so instead of having a, a sort of hard edge coming together, they're kind of, they're, they're soft, radius edges, so it doesn't matter, we'll have to do some filler work there anyway. But, uh, happy there that's gone. So I'm going to get a couple of clamps on there. And I know you're going to ask, everybody always asks where these clamps come from. They're a rebel hobby in Belgium or Sweden, I can't remember now. But they're rebel hobby clamps. So everybody always asks. Sometimes five or six different people ask in the same video and it's, it's all in the comments. So there we go. Right, so I'm going to leave that now to go off. And I am going to say goodbye because we're already on about an hour and 20 minutes i think i don't want to bore you to tears so you're gonna to have to wait for part five i'm afraid and see how that goes in but um as i say i'm not going to press that that little hook part there in the belt see that piece in the middle that's gonna oh let's give it a go i just sits in that that's it job done i don't think it's going to pop out on its own so oh, it might do. So we may want to put a little drop of super glue in there or something or just tack that down with something. We shall see. But anyway, there we go. So that's how she looks. 
yes they are the plastic belts from the box right thanks for watching guys i'll see you all soon for part five hope you've enjoyed this hope you're enjoying it hope you're going to build yourself one and i'll see you all soon bye for now <laughs>